Hey guys, it's Cass. I am going to be starting a little December reading vlog for the first part of the month. It is December 5th and I figured I would update you guys on what I've been reading. I finished one book for the month so far and that was Catching Fire. <laughs> by Suzanne Collins. This is the second book in the Hunger Games trilogy and I read this in like three days. Gave it five stars because it honestly had me so shook. <laughs> I did not have reading and loving the Hunger Games on my bingo card for 2023 but here we are. I'm not gonna really talk about the plot of this since it's the second book, but just know it was wonderful. I'm also back on my bullshit with Simone. Um, I really jinxed myself with this book. I said in my end of the year reading tag that I was going to finish this by the end of November, but after I filmed that video I literally did not touch this book for weeks. But I finally picked it back up and the math now works out to I need to read 14 pages every day in December to get to the end of it before the end of the year. And that is like the perfect amount of pages for me to read on my lunch break at work. So I've just been taking this to work with me for the past couple of days. I'm still enjoying it. I'm glad that I kind of was able to get back into it even though I hadn't picked it up in a couple of weeks. Like I said, there's still a lot of like historical and cultural references that are pretty over my head, but I can still find my way through it. It's not jarring enough that it's making the book difficult to understand or anything like that. I'm 258 pages into this. I think it's like 666 pages long, so we are slowly but surely making our way through the prime of life. I also started last night Amrita by Banana Yoshimoto. Um, this has the longest prologue in the whole entire world. I don't know why they didn't just make it the first chapter, but there's a pretty lengthy prologue that I got through, and then I think I'm like 15 pages into the actual book <laughs> past the Roman numerals. This has been on my shelf for a really long time. I picked it up at Half Price Books a while ago, and yeah, I felt like now was the the right time for it. I've read Banana Yoshimoto's short story collection Lizard already. I haven't read her novel Kitchen, which I feel like is the main one that everyone talks about, but I'm keeping an eye out for it. I haven't run into it at any of the bookstores that I've been to. So yeah, we're still very early on into this, but it is about a girl who lives with her mom and her little brother and um, some like family friends and we find out really early on in the book that her sister passed away in a car accident and the prologue is just kind of the main character I can't remember her name right now <laughs> um, but it's just the main character running into her sister's boyfriend we kind of get introduced to all of the characters and then in the first chapter so far from what I've read, we find out that the main character is having some like memory problems because of a fall that she took. So yeah, I'm not sure where this is gonna go, but I'm enjoying it so far. Another book that is on my December TBR that I picked up is On Women by Susan Sontag. I started this maybe the last day of November or like the first day of December and I don't know if it's the right time for me to take this on. I got through the introduction and the first essay and then like I'm a couple pages into the second essay but I just haven't really felt like picking it up. Um, I think that I'll enjoy it but I just don't know that I'm in the headspace right now to really like dig into this. A lot of the essay collections that I read are more personal and this definitely has a more critical tone to it, which I know I'll be able to like get through and appreciate, but 
I'm thinking that I might put this down just for now. I'm not going to fully DNF it, but maybe just revisit it a little bit later on when I have the brain cells to just really concentrate on this the way that it deserves. I don't want to push myself through it just to finish it if I'm not really fully invested in it. So I think we are going to set this aside. The only book that I didn't get to on my November TBR was The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. I would have had to squeeze this in right like before, right after reading My Work by Olga Ravin, and I feel like it just would have been too much. My work was very focused on motherhood, and it seems like this is going to be as well, and they both kind of seem to take more experimental forms, and I just felt like it was going to be too much of a similar thing at one time. So I think I'm also going to not roll this one over from November to December and I'm just going to kind of put it back on my TBR shelf and we'll get to it at some point. Um, I really am interested to read it but once again I want to be in the right mindset for it and really be able to give it my full attention. I don't know if I'm going to continue to do the monthly TBRs. I was kind of planning on doing that whenever I first started this channel and did the end of the year book tag with the November and December TBR list. It worked out really well for me for November, but I feel like I chose the December books a bit too far in advance because a lot of them right now aren't speaking to me as much as they were in November. So I was going back and forth between sticking with the monthly ones but just filming them closer to that month instead of a month in advance or doing kind of like seasonal tbr lists so like stuff for the rest of winter spring summer fall and just kind of having like a group of books to choose from throughout <laughs> a span of a couple months i think that that might work well for me too but i don't know i just have my list of December books here that I had picked out and none of them are just really speaking to me right at this moment. I think I'm gonna leave Year of the Monkey by Patti Smith on the list for December and also A Frozen Woman by Annie Renault. I think we'll leave The Right to Sex on here too by Amiya Srinivasan. I think that'll be a good... Oh, do I want to do that? I never thought that I was like a huge mood reader until looking at the stack of books that I picked out for myself and now I'm like, ooh, I don't think I'm in the mood. Tough decisions. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> We're gonna leave The Right to Sex, A Frozen Woman, and The Year of the Monkey on the list for December, but I am going to set aside for now Motherhood by Sheila Hetty and The Unicorn by Iris Murdoch. There's just some books digitally and like from the library that have really piqued my interest. I have a bunch of things saved on Scribd, or I think they changed the name to Everand now, but I'm going to keep calling it Scribd because that's what I'm used to. <laughs> um, but I just have a couple things that are saved on there that I'm really just itching to get to, um, more so than those other books that I had had picked out for December. So we're going to do that. And then the reason why I took Motherhood by Sheila Hetty off the list, one, I feel like it's going to be kind of also similar to my work and the Argonauts, where more of an experimental form focused on motherhood. I don't want to burn myself out on that subject matter because my work was pretty dense to get through. But the other reason why I am going to put it aside for now is because I got a very exciting email yesterday. Uh, FSG has given me a digital galley of Alphabetical Diaries by Sheila Hetty, which is coming out in February of 2024. And I want to get to this one as soon as possible. It sounds super interesting. Jalen from The Bar in the Bookcase gave it a rave review. And yeah, I just think that the premise of this is right up my alley. Um, it's Sheila Hetty's diary entries, but they're all alphabetized. 
and it goes through, obviously, starts with A and goes through the alphabet because they're alphabetical. Um, that's the, <laughs> that's the meaning of the word. But yeah, I'm just so intrigued by this. I love a diary. I love a journal. I'm really interested in reading those kinds of things from writers. So yeah, I'm super appreciative to have my hands on this. This is my first galley. I made a net galley account a couple weeks ago, just kind of on a whim. I didn't think that I would actually <laughs> get anything from it, let alone Sheila Hetty's new book. So I'm super appreciative to the people at FSG, given someone like me a chance to read this early. But yeah, I'm definitely going to do a separate video just about this book because I know it's highly anticipated. Um, but yeah, this is going to be my first, my first Hetty, I've decided, instead of motherhood. So yeah, very excited about this. Okay, so to sum it up, we are going to be reading Amrita by Manina Yoshimoto and The Prime of Life by Simone de Beauvoir. And I just borrowed on Libby, They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us by Hanif Abdurraqib. That one for some reason has just been like in my brain and I just feel like I need to pick it up which is funny because I've heard about it for a little while now and wasn't super interested in reading it but I think that I heard someone on here talk about it. I don't remember who it was but I think someone gave it uh, a pretty good review and I was like ooh maybe I should read that. So I just borrowed that from Libby and that'll kind of be my essay collection to round out the current reads. Hello. It is Wednesday. I just got home from work a little bit ago and I wanted to do a little update. I feel like this is going to be, there's so much glare. Oh my goodness. I feel like this is going to be chaotic since I'm reading three different books, but it's fine. I wanted to talk about They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us by Hanif Abdurraqib first. I started this last night before I went to bed. I read the introduction and the first two essays. Um, the first essay was about Chance the Rapper and the second one was about Bruce Springsteen and I love this book <laughs> so far. I, I usually don't go into books blind and like not knowing what they're about but I really didn't know a ton about this book before I picked it up and I am so excited to keep reading it. There's an essay about Fall Out Boy and My Chemical Romance, and I know he was in Where Are Your Boys Tonight by Chris Payne. He was like one of the people that Chris had talked to to write that book, but I didn't realize that those bands would be a part of this. Um, I'm also very excited because there's one about the Wonder Years too, which were like one of my favorite bands in high school and I just recently like really got back into them and like just saw them live back in October so really excited about that but this book is just so smart and it's in a way that's not unapproachable. One of the things that was mentioned in the introduction was how he makes you care about things that you maybe didn't before you know like a musical artist I don't listen to Chance the Rapper or <laughs> Bruce Springsteen, but Hanif just had such a way of painting their portrait, just giving you like the vibe of the music and the setting, whether it's the like 
interactive pop-up that Chance the Rapper did for his album or a Bruce Springsteen concert in New Jersey. He's just super poetic about it and yeah, it's just super accessible. I'm really glad that I put down the Susan Sontag essay collection and picked up this instead because this is just more of what I am feeling at this current moment. So I'm super excited to keep reading it. I feel like I need to stop myself from just like barreling through it. So more to come on that. I also got to chapter three in Amrita by Banana Yoshimoto. This book is like interesting so far. I can't really tell where it's gonna go. It's like very quiet and unassuming and just kind of like slice of life and just kind of scenes from Sukumi, the main character's life. But I can't figure out if it's gonna take like a thriller twist. There was mention of a murder <laughs> that someone that lives on her street committed. So I don't know if it's gonna turn into like some sort of thrillery thing or like magical realism. Um, there's a lot of talk about memory and there's been like a couple dream scenes so far and yeah I just can't figure out where it's gonna go. I feel like most of the the plotty elements were kind of laid out in the prologue so I'm not sure if it's just gonna be Sakumi working through her feelings. Another element that got brought up in the second chapter was her grief about her dad who passed away so I don't know if it's gonna go into more of an exploration of that. I don't know yet. I'm only 33 pages in and it is like how many pages is this? and it's almost 400 pages so we've got some time but yeah it's fine so far. I've also made some progress on The Prime of Life by Miss Simone here. She has been talking about this woman named Olga who is part of like the inspiration for her novel She Came to Stay and that's been really interesting. I don't know how to pronounce this dude's name which is really embarrassing. Anyways, um, Olga kind of got in between Simone's relationship with Jean-Paul Sartre according to the a guy that pronounces French words on YouTube. She kind of got in between their relationship and was the inspiration for She Came to Stay, which I actually have on my TBR shelf and might be the next book by Simone that I pick up. Just like to take a break from the memoirs. So yeah, it's been cool to kind of get that behind the scenes look into the inspiration for another one of her books. And yeah, not a ton to say here. I think she is approaching her 30s, if not already in her 30s. She's talking a lot about how she is dealing with getting older and, you know, a lot of her friends have like fallen into depressions, Jean-Paul <laughs> included. He had kind of a bout with some like hallucinations. And I think it's really interesting how she kind of talks about the way that he deals with that and kind of her outlook on the world because she had a very like cheerful disposition uh despite everything that was going on with like the beginnings of world war ii approaching swiftly and stuff like that so yeah this has been keeping me company during my lunch breaks at work i'm going to make some more progress on these books tonight i'm also considering picking up Mockingjay <laughs> this weekend. The last book in the Hunger Games trilogy because I have a proven track record of being able to finish the Hunger Games books in a weekend. That's what I did with the Hunger Games and Catching Fire so I'm like oh I don't have anything to do this weekend maybe I will finish the series because my friends want to have a get together to watch all of the movies over the holidays. But one of the things that I was thinking about when I was thinking about picking up Mockingjay is just like the concept of escapism in reading. I feel like that's always 
such a big reason people give for why they love to read and I'm just curious to get other people's thoughts like if you guys are into the same books as me I know that a lot of the times with like literary fiction and like essay collections and things like that I the goal and the outcome typically for me is not to escape I typically with those books end up looking more inwards whether that's looking at myself more closely or at the world more closely but with the hunger games <laughs> i feel like they have really accomplished just like absolutely transporting me into a different world you know obviously i can get lost in a book of any genre if it's good but there's just something different about like the sci-fi fantasy aspects of it that I'm starting to <laughs> really understand why people are so into that because it just definitely is a much different reading experience from reading more like realistic literary fiction and things like that. So yeah, I don't know. Are, do you guys, when you pick up a book, are you looking to escape or are you looking to reflect like I am? Um, I feel like there's definitely a difference there. And I'm just curious what other people with similar tastes think about that question because I was thinking about it while I was getting ready for work this morning. <laughs> Hey guys, it is Saturday afternoon and I just wanted to do a little update. Um, I am 40% through They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us and you guys, this book is so good. I read all of the second and third sections yesterday, which judging off of the table of contents looked to me to be the like emo <laughs> punk sections of the book and it was absolutely wonderful. The essay on the Wonder Years was great. He did such a good job at capturing the themes and the moods of Suburbia, I've Given You All and Now I'm Nothing, which is one of their albums. He just, he gets it and I really loved reading about songs that I know all of the words to, that I've listened to for 10 years at this point. Super cool to see that in a book. I think he really summed up the vibes with this quote. He's talking about three of the Wonder Years albums, um, how one of them talks about home, the other one talks about growing up, and the third one talks about death and loss. And yeah, I just love this quote. He says, all of them say, I'm sad like you are and I can't promise to fix this, but we're going to be here together. And I feel like that just sums up the reason why I love the music that I do and the reason why it has resonated with me for so long. There's also a great discussion about 21 Pilots <laughs> in here. They were a band that I absolutely loved back in the day, but he is kind of talking about how they're from Columbus, Ohio. He is also from Columbus, Ohio, and just kind of the music scene there and the kids that were in bands that he knew compared to the guys that are in 21 Pilots and just the magic of the like shitty bands that his friends were in whenever they were teenagers. There was also a really unexpected essay about the band Cute Is What We Aim For who I don't listen to a ton of. I know like two of their songs but I was not expecting them to pop up in here. They're one of the lesser talked about bands from this genre of music but 
I'm just like looking at the the quotes that I have highlighted on my e-reader here and I just feel like he is so ahead of his time this book came out I think in 2017 I want to say and I feel like he was having the conversations that a lot of people in music are having now just about the like gender divide in emo and punk music I feel like especially with the when we were young festival that happened last year or this year whenever it was I know Haley from Paramore talked a lot about how you know we look back at that time in music as like this amazing thing but there were a lot of issues with racism sexism things like that in that music scene and I really like the part at the end of the cute is what we aim for essay where the a guy that is standing next to him at their like 10 year anniversary show of one of their albums is like I don't know I have a wife and a daughter now and this just isn't how it was when we were young and Hanif goes I smile and I shake my head no no it isn't I think that the way that he is discussing gender in here is really interesting the subject matter in a lot of these songs is quite violent um, and that violence is usually aimed towards the women that have broken hearts of these guys in bands. And I'm going to read another quote here. Um, he says, Who among us, regardless of gender, hasn't scrawled something in the silence of a notebook about an ex-someone? It's a part of the coping, at least to a point. The problem is one of audience, though. The problem is the one of the notebook becoming public, sung to thousands. The problem is one of men being largely the only ones doing the singing. And ultimately, the problem becomes when those men don't age beyond the adolescent heartbroken temper tantrums that we all have before we learn better and start to know better. Like, drag them. As much as I love <laughs> this kind of music, he is just hitting the nail on the head with all of the things that are wrong with that music scene. He also really lays out the themes in The Black Parade, which is a My Chemical Romance album. And I think that the... It's an album that I've loved for a really long time, and he really opened my eyes to a lot of themes. I haven't really sat down and thought a lot about the kind of storyline of the album. It's basically like a concept album where all of the songs are kind of going through this character, the patient's end of his life and his dealings with death and kind of what comes after. And yeah, I just, I've never really thought about <laughs> the album that deeply as much as I've loved it throughout the years. So that was really cool to read. And then of course, there's a Fall Out Boy essay in here, which did make me cry. Fall Out Boy is my favorite band and oh, it was so good. He is talking about a show that he saw of theirs right before they went on hiatus back in like 2008, 2009 and just how they seemed so done with it and so out of it. And then he kind of contrasts that with a passage about the first show that they played after their hiatus was over back in 2013, which <laughs> I remember the day that they came back from their hiatus so clearly, like it was yesterday. It was such a big deal for me as a 13, 14 year old. And just the way that he described that show. First of all, I'm so jealous that he was there. Second of all, his description of the band right before the show started and just the transformation that kind of took place with them and their relationships across the four years that they were not a band just really tugged at my heartstrings. He said, before they started playing, they huddled briefly, slapping each other's hands. It felt more than anything an acknowledging of no hard feelings or an acknowledgement of that which we all spend a lifetime searching for, the permission to come home again, after forgetting that there are still people who will show up to love you no matter how long you've been away. No matter how obsessed you've been with your own vanishing, there will always be someone who still wants you whole. Pete, for all his songs about racing toward an abyss, returned to us with two kids. Patrick and Joe returned Mary. No one wanted out anymore, at least not that night. That just made me so <laughs> emotional because he was describing their last show before the hiatus is them all looking like they wanted out. And just to see that difference, it really, it really does something to me. And 
I think he just had such a keen observation on the relationships within the band. Pete writes all of the songs and Patrick is the singer of those words, but Pete is very center of attention and Patrick is very not. <laughs> and yeah, I think the way that he was looking at kind of the push and pull of their relationship was just, it was great. And I'm really glad that I'm reading this book. I have a couple sections left in it and I don't think that they're going to be as targeted to my tastes as <laughs> this last bit was, but I'm still really excited. I think I'm going to learn a lot from it and yeah, I'm I'm just really really pumped about it. Uh, I haven't really made any more progress in Amrita by Banana Yoshimoto, and then I've been doing my 14 pages a day of The Prime of Life by Simone de Beauvoir, so we are trucking along the 14 pages that I read this morning. She was talking about her travels in Greece, which was interesting to read about as someone that doesn't travel very often. I really like the way that she talks about the different places in Europe that she's been to, but those really happy and beautiful descriptions of those places are also contrasted by the political situation that was going on in Europe at the time in like the late 30s. So yeah, I am enjoying that. Also enjoying hearing about her writing process and the way that she was kind of encouraged to take charge of her career and insert herself more into her work and make it more personal has been really interesting to hear about. So I have just been having a chill weekend. I finished the sweater that I was knitting. I just need to sew in like the ends of the yarn so that they're not sticking out. So I think I'm going to do that, but I'm so excited about it. I learned how to knit back in like 8th or 7th grade and it's been like a really on and off hobby for me. I'll like make a hat and get really excited about it and then not make anything else for like <laughs> years. <laughs> but I started this back in like May and worked on it like on and off throughout the summer and everything and finally finished it so I'm really proud of myself because this is like the biggest thing that I've actually completed so far everything else has been like hats I think there were like a couple pairs of mittens maybe I do have a pair of mittens that I've been in the middle of making for three years at this point and I don't think that I have enough yarn to finish both of them so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that but I just found a pattern for another sweater and ordered some of the yarn for it. I'm waiting for the other yarn that I need to come back in stock, but I'm going to try and keep up with it. Hopefully this next one won't take me six or seven months <laughs> to complete, but yeah, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to sew these ends in. I like watched a tutorial, but I was struggling to figure out how to do it myself on here. And then I'm going to read some more of They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us. Hey guys, it is now Wednesday. I think I last talked to you guys on Saturday. Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, I feel like I started out really strong and motivated. And then the longer that I sat on my couch and did nothing all weekend, the less uh, motivation I had to film it. So... Yeah, I feel like if I had done any more though, this video would have been way too long, but I just wanted to give my final update for this video. I finished They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us, and you guys, I absolutely love this book. I rated it five stars. I think it was so genius. I know the last clip I was talking about the music writing, about the punk and emo bands that Hanif was talking about in here, and once you get through those, it kind of takes a shift in tone, which I really didn't mind. He talks a lot about being... Oops. Okay, Libby was having a freak out, but 
in the last parts of the book, he is talking about being black, being Muslim, and I just think that the discussions that he was having surrounding those topics were so insightful and just so smart. And it was really interesting to hear his perspectives on different things. He still weaves in some different music writing in with it, but he also dives a lot more into different like political and historical events too, which I thought was a nice switch up from like just talking about music. So yeah, I absolutely love this. If you are into essays, if you're into music writing, if you're into books about, you know, society and culture and things like that, like this is a must read. I highly recommend this if you have not read it yet. I'm still trekking along with good old Simone. We are right at the beginning of World War II now at this point. And yeah, she's just kind of summed up the 10 year span from her, the beginning of her 20s up until the beginning of her 30s. And just talking about the way that her perspectives have changed and her thoughts and feelings on different things. So. Yeah, I am making progress here. It's really, I don't know if you can see the bookmark in there, but I've only got this much left. So I'm excited. I feel like it's been a long journey with this, but it's definitely been interesting so far. Finally, we've got Amrita. I'm about a quarter of the way through this and I just don't know. I've still got my bookmark in there. I'm not gonna take it out just yet. I'm gonna leave this on my nightstand, but this one's a this one's a weird one and I don't know that it's really pulling me in enough to justify me taking the time to read all 400 pages of it right now. I don't think that's fair to me or to the book because I could pick this back up in six months and it could be you know the best thing that I've ever read so yeah I think I might add this to the pile with On Women by Susan Sontag and revisit it at a later time. I just feel like it's a busy time of year and especially like the next week for me is going to be super busy so I just need to be reading something that is making me want to pick it up and this is not really doing that. We are getting some more interesting plot points here. The little brother is like having premonitions and stuff like that but I feel like she's just kind of talking in circles in this book which is what i do in these videos so like it's fine but it's just a bit too tedious for me right now i read the afterword that banana yoshimoto wrote for this edition of this book and she says the theme of this book is simple i want to express the idea that regardless of all the amazing events that happen to each of us there will always be the never-ending cycle of daily life i give my deepest thanks to the one who translated this book so random and disjointed with with such thoughtful care and i just i thought that that was an interesting thing for her to kind of apologize for <laughs> In the afterward, I really like what she said about kind of the everyday moments in life. I do think that this book does a good job of showing that, but it's just a bit too much for me right now. I don't know that I can get through 400 pages of it, so we're going to set this aside just for the time being. Since I decided to put Amrita down, I did end up picking up another novel, and that is My Heart Hemmed In by Marie Ndiaye. And this is another one, kind of a similar situation to They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us. I have heard a little bit about this author, mainly from A Horse at Night by Amina Kane. She's mentioned a couple times in there. That's a great book, by the way, A Horse at Night, if you want to add a ton of books to your TBR. I have an entire list in my phone of all of the books that Amina Kane talks about in that book, but... Marie is one of the authors that's mentioned in there and I found out this was on Scribd and I was like, you know what, let's just go for it. And once again, feeling very good about my decision to kind of nix my TBR list for December because this is another fantastic book. I'm a quarter of the way through this one as well and I have literally had to tear myself away from reading this the past two nights. Um, it is about a couple, a man and a woman, they're both teachers, and they are kind of being ostracized by the people in their town, and they're not really sure why. Uh, I think it's so interesting in this. She is 
really doing a good job at kind of bringing us towards some answers but then at the very last second she pulls it away from you and you're like oh my god what is what is the truth what's going on here um just through different conversations with uh the couple's like neighbors there's a conversation with a pharmacist that it's just kind of going back and forth and you keep thinking that you're getting closer to the reveal of what's going on why these people are so hated in their town all of a sudden but then she she switches gears and it is such a page turner it's really honestly giving like literary thriller vibes i feel like this would be really good if you're into like spooky books in october i feel like this would be a really good <laughs> option to add to your list i don't want to get too much into the plot of it because i just feel like this is better kind of going into it blind and yeah this is what i want out of a book right now i don't want to feel forced to pick something up i want to feel like i you know am truly enjoying it and i really am with this so yeah i'm very excited to get through a bit more of this but those are the updates this is going to be the end of the vlog let me know if this format works for you i'm still trying to kind of figure it out i don't know if it's interesting if it's boring so let me know but yeah i've got some fun stuff planned for like wrap-ups but i'm a little bit stressed out because <laughs> i feel like i haven't given myself enough time to plan them out properly so hopefully i will get all of that done on the timeline that i want to but yeah thanks for tuning in let me know if there's anything you want to see let me know if there's anything good that you've been reading lately and i will see you in the next one